Joining us right now is Larry Merlot. He is the president and CEO of CVS Health. And Mark Bertolini is the chairman and CEO of Aetna. And gentlemen, welcome to both of you. It's Thanks. great to have you here today. Great to be here. Well, this is uh, not exactly something that was a huge surprise or secret. We knew that it was behind <laughs> the scenes getting worked up. But why don't you two tell us how you came together and why? why? Why this merger makes sense from your perspective? Well, you know what, Becky? We've had a business relationship going back to 2010. And... You know, as Mark and I continue to have discussions in terms of how can we do things more strategically, you know, it was clear as CVS Health was, you know, moving to become more of a healthcare company and getting closer to payers, Mark had a similar strategy in terms of getting closer to the customer. And it's really the perfect time to bring these two companies together to create a new healthcare platform that can be easier to use and less expensive for consumers and really create a new front door to healthcare in our country. And Mark, you have talked about wanting to get closer to consumers. You're talking about a situation now where you have more than 9,700 retail stores um, and, and minute clinics, too. Um, how many minute clinics are out there? We have uh, about 1,100. Okay, so that's a way to reach your customer. What do you plan to do with those? Well, if you think about what um, the consumer thinks about health care, it's the, single highest, the highest line item budget in their household budget today. Um, and it's the most confusing system that anyone could use. So think of an idea where we have 10,000 new front doors to the healthcare system, where people can walk in, where they can ask for some help, um, get guided through the system. We can make the insurance the back room of the operation. We can waive prior authorizations. We can waive co-pays as people use the system in a way that's more effective. So we can reduce costs. So it's simpler. It's customized for the individual based on what they need. And it's cheaper. And all of these things will take you how long to implement? How long before a customer has a different experience watching it, walking into a CVS? You know, Becky, upon closing, there's things that we'll be able to do, you know, out of the gate. And at the same time, we'll begin to pilot these concepts. You know, we'll learn from them. And I, I would expect within the next couple of years, you'll see a dramatic change in terms of, you know, the store being not just about products, but also service offerings that, you know, can help people on their path to better health and, and really work as a complement to the medical community, the physicians, in terms of ensuring, you know, that those consumers are following the care plans that their physicians have laid out for them. Larry, we've talked about a lot of reasons that this makes sense for CVS. Uh, we've talked about the pressure coming at the front end, the retail end from Amazon, the pressure at the back end, the pharmacy benefits managers, just from people looking for ways to kind of cut cost and focus on that. Is that what, what drove you uh, to, to look for this, too? You know, Becky, it's really about meeting this unmet need that, you know, Mark was talking about. You look at, you know, the healthcare economy is now, what, $3.5 trillion right. and continuing to grow it you know, what everyone recognizes as an unsustainable pace. And, you know, we think we have the opportunity here to begin to bend that cost curve and at the same time help people achieve their best health. You look at chronic disease in this country today, about half of all Americans have at least one of those chronic diseases. It's accounting for 80% of the health care costs. That, that stunned me when I heard those numbers, 80% mm -hmm. of the costs. And, and, and there's billions of dollars every year on you know, unnecessary and avoidable spending because people are not following those care plans. We can make a dramatic improvement in terms of, you know, getting people back on a path to better health. Do you worry about, oh. No, no, I, I want to talk all these different things, but it's philosophically the individual mandate and, and the way it, it's a political football right now, the way that it's, that it's characterized. And, and <clears throat> one thing to realize is that a lot of people that pay that penalty are people that can't afford premiums where, where they are right now, so they pay it. The other side is going to say, and uh, I've talked about, we've got Larry Summers coming on saying thousands of people are going to die now from, from what's in this uh, health care plan because they choose not to participate in Obamacare, I mm -hmm. guess. Where, what's the answer to this? And it's being demagogued on both sides. Are you guys in favor of keeping the individual mandate, or is there another way to do this? I think the individual mandate is it's currently constructed, and the financial structure of the exchanges don't work right now. Mm -hmm. So I would argue the individual mandate is almost uh, uh, an immaterial argument. I agree. We need a bipartisan solution. Every major piece of social legislation that we've ever passed in this country has been bipartisan, mm -hmm. because every year they need to be tweaked. Here we have a bill, the ACA, that hasn't been touched for eight years. If we didn't do that with if we did that with Medicare and we didn't touch it for eight years, it would fall apart. What are the well. chances it's going to be tweaked instead of um, 
this got They're going to have to. They're, they're, gonna know, they're trying it. this piece in tax reform. You've got continuing resolutions on Medicare. You've got the budget that are all going to drive tweaking this. Now, what does the solution look like? The solution looks like a... What we have in the pool today is we have a lot of young people who don't join. They're the people paying that penalty because they can do math. We know our arithmetic education in schools is working. When somebody says, I have to pay a premium every month, and I have to have a $6,000 deductible, and when I go to the doctor once a year, I pay cash. Do, should I do this? No. But if you put in front of them a subsidy, um, the Republicans called it an advanced refundable tax credit, where you say, you don't get this unless you join, and when you get it, you can put it into an H, you know, a, a health reimbursement account or an HSA that will lack, can grow to $16,000. So as you age, you have this pot of money there, then you'll get younger people in. That will equalize the pool. And then you have a more financially stable organization. Is that, right? is that the type of thing we're going to hear, though? I haven't heard that solution laid out. Well, you've yeah. heard it from different pieces from different people. Yeah. But if you look at the Murray uh, Alexander bill, it mm -hmm. starts to approach that. And that's a good bipartisan solution. So I would argue, get something done bipartisan. Let me ask both of you about whether you expect you'll be hearing any complaints from regulators on this front. Um, I know you've gone through it with similar situations, Mark, with uh, trying to do an insurance deal. But now that you have the Department of Justice focusing on AT&T and Time Warner over vertical deals, how does that, uh, does it concern you and how would that potentially impact you? Well, Becky, we think this transaction is highly complimentary. You, know, you think about what we've been talking about this morning and we've got a tremendous opportunity to create value you know, for consumers and payers. And you know, when we talk about payers, that does include the federal government. So we'll look forward to sitting down with the regulators, talking about you know, how this comes to life in a meaningful way to you know, see the benefits that consumers and payers can, can see from this transaction. Were you surprised with the, with, what the Department of Justice has laid out, though, with AT&T and Time Warner? I realize that's a different industry, but in a similar way, looking at vertical mer mergers, places that you wouldn't necessarily have seen regulators step in in the past. Yeah, Becky, I think it's hard for us to talk about, you know, the transactions that may exist in other companies. But, you know, again, you know, th this vertical integration of, you know, two terrific companies, you know, the fact that we can demonstrate value in a meaningful way you know, we think is the key to, you know, getting across the finish line. Mark, are you staying on to run Aetna? I was confused when I was reading through the press release. It said people who are man in management at Aetna would be running that as a separate unit. Are you that person? So I've developed a great team, um, and that team will take over. Um, we need to, you know, we have two companies. I don't know anything about retail. Larry doesn't know anything, a little bit about health insurance. <laughs> doesn't, I won't say doesn't know anything. I just spent a lot of money on one. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, but we need the expertise of both organizations to come together, and I will take a spot on the board of directors um, at CVS. But, but, but you won't be running day-to-day -day operations. I will not be in operations day-to-day. -day. But you know what, Becky, I'm going to be picking his brain, and you know, <laughs> and I, I appreciate that Mark's going to be joining our board, and, and I can certainly benefit from his expertise and and his vision. And you know, as Mark mentioned, we're going to continue to operate, you know, Aetna as a separate business unit, and it'll be led by members of of Mark's team. So uh, what what next? What's the next step for you all in terms of, uh, of this deal? You know what? The next step is, you know, executing and beginning the integration process and, you know, bringing the things that, you know, we're talking about to life, you know, so that, you know, we can create this new healthcare platform and, you know, make it easier for customers to use and navigate and at the same time reduce costs and help them achieve the best health possible for them. We want to pilot some of this, but my goal is to deliver a better company than the company Larry thought he bought. You know, there's something else, mm -hmm. and I commend you for this. <clears throat> Healthcare over time is becoming more seamless. For example, when I go get an exam and I need a certain drug, right through our Epic system, right into your store on, by the way, I buy all my drugs, my wife does too, at CVS, so relax. Okay, you're you're going to get some extra Don't I look healthy? That, so. Don't I look healthier? Okay. <laughs> But you got a store in 53rd and Lex, and you got one in the Palm Beach, uh, North Palm Beach. But I watch and I say, this is pretty good because I get a call when my prescription is due for refill. Now, one of the problems you have with older people, guys like me, is we forget. We, no, we don't only forget to pick up the prescription, we sometimes forget to take the pill that day. So all the things you're talking about, I think one of the big payoffs is going to be better health care and better um, oversight of people that need oversight mm -hmm. for these drugs they take. So, look, 
it's going to happen. It has to happen. Did, I, oh, did, did the if you had to characterize it as, as a defensive move or, or, or an offensive move, is it is it putting together? I, I know it's complementary, but can you leverage what both companies have offensively to 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 be the place? that takes on Amazon or takes on Walmart or takes on whatever healthcare looks like in five years, is CVS Aetna going to be at the forefront? You know what, Joe, we, we, we do see this as a growth and an expansion story for the reasons that we've been not talking defensive. about. Not defensive, not because uh, you see threats on all, on all sides. Not defensive. You know, we're, we've, we've talked about the unmet <coughs> need that we're looking to make. You know, you, you, you look at healthcare today and you know, when you talk about the traditional healthcare system and the opportunities for, I'll describe it as intervention, you know, they're there today, but what they're missing is the convenience and the coordination. <coughs> and that's the unmet need that we think we can create with this new front door to health. And all with cost pressures in, in, in the background, too. And, and I mean, I look at the media landscape and what the internet and what, what mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out who's going to be ahead in, in 10 years is daunting. And I don't think it's that different with, with healthcare, also because not only because of the internet, but because of, you know, uh, infl uh, cost, uh, healthcare inflation and, and technology, everything and we're going to be able to do. And, too. you know, you're gonna be, we're going to have sensors all over the place sending our data to, you know, when, you know, you didn't take your drug or it's not working, your glucose level suddenly spiked. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. And I, I don't know who I want. Um, maybe CVS said. Well, I, what I you want know. is a trusted relationship. So if you have a place you can go, most people define their health as a barrier to the life they want to live. And, if, and the unmet need is it's so confusing, how do I figure this out? Mm -hmm. And if you have a place to go where we can help you figure that out and we build that relationship with you and we map it out and we make your appointments, we clear your prior authorizations, mm -hmm. maybe we don't even have claims to pay because we've arranged it with a network in front of you. And so it's an easier journey. Well, that's a very different model. That meets a need that nobody else can meet unless this combination. So looking over our shoulders at competitors saying, what are they doing next? is not a worthwhile effort. It has to be, where do we think we need to go? What, what do you guys do with employers like ours, like Comcast? We used to be Aetna, we are CVS, but now we're yeah. United Health. If you're, if you're using one half of your operation but not the other half, what happens? Well, it's I'm, okay that you made a mistake earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, th I think there's a great opportunity that when you combine the two together, there's, there's a synergy that can be created. You know, when you think about you know, the, the information and the analytics capabilities of Aetna and you combine that with the convenience and, and, and the face-to-face -face interactions of CVS, you know, that's, again, another way to bring to life everything that we've been talking about this morning. So when you do, you, do you ever wake up and think, oh God, United Healthcare or, or Express? I mean, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and think these guys are going to eat or not? Who's your biggest Amazon? Yeah. Walmart? Who, who do you worry about? Who's got it? Who's a real formidable you know, competitor Joe, for you? You, you? We have you know tremendous respect for all of our competitors. Absolutely. You know, Mark said it best. Okay, when you talk about you know how do we focus on what we can do? How do we find that white space, that unmet need out there? And you know, how does that become our work to fill that void? And you know, the customer doesn't, if we listen to our customers carefully, which we spend a tremendous amount of time doing, you know, we can hear their frustrations. And then it's our job to come back and how do we solve for those frustrations? And that's what a lot of this is all about. What was the first conversation you two had in terms of potentially combining your companies? I'll let you take that one. Well, so <laughs> two years ago, um, we were just about to do the Humana deal, and Larry and I were having dinner at Peppercorns in, uh, in Hartford. And he said, you know what, every time I do something to save, to, to, to improve health, um, I lose revenue and you make money. <laughs> and I said, you got the wrong revenue model. And you know, wouldn't it be better if we could share risk in a way that would allow us to, to benefit you as a result of what you do to improve people's health? And, you know, the next two days or three days later, we signed this deal, and it was sort of like, you know, we'll see you when we get, when we get done with this. I always imagined this relationship coming together, whether or not we did Humana. Even with Humana, it would have been even more powerful. So now we're here. And I think, you know, Larry and I started talking about it seriously probably a year after that and said, how does this happen? What would it take? Um, why would we do it? And we shared data back and forth. Um, you know, every 50 basis points we change trend, it's $480 million in underwriting margin for us and our customers. Wow. And Larry, you were talking about moves like when CVS got rid of cigarettes. Are those the type of moves you were talking about? Yeah, they, they were. I, you know, if you go back, I, I think our journey probably goes back a decade with, 
you know, CVS and Caremark coming yeah. together. And, you know, through that time, we've continued to add, you know, customer-facing health assets. And, you know, and we recognize the complexities associated that led to the decision back in 2014 to eliminate the sale of tobacco products. You know, if I could make one criticism of healthcare in general, drug companies, insurance companies, for, uh, retailers, the industry has done a terrible job of bragging about just how much better human beings are because of the healthcare industry. From discovery all the way through to what I said was reminding people to keep taking their drugs, uh, including in your, in your formulary more and more drugs that help life that are more expensive. But when you take a step back, you say, wait a minute, yeah, it's, it's 15 grand or it's 20 grand, but this guy's gonna live to be 90. You know, how, how much is life worth? It's precious. And I, I tell this to all the guys in the pharmaceutical industry, You've done a horrible job of pointing out to the world just how much better. Look at life expectancy in America. Uh, 80 years ago, we were what, 48? I'm 82. I'm not going to stop. Now, there are people who would wish I'd stop, and there are people who are praying that God makes me stop. But that's beside. the point is, I, I think the industry collectively, all of you in it, has got to do a much better job of getting your message out there of how much you do for mankind. We're 34th out of 34 in value among the OECD nations. We're 11th when you add together health care and social spending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're the only nation of the OECD nations that spends more than 42% on health care. We spend 62. Everybody else is spending more on determinants, mm -hmm. social determinants. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why we have an opioid epidemic where 80% of all the opioids produced in the world are consumed by Americans. Yep. Yep. And we have this problem. It's a loss of hope, and there's a malaise around the lack of mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. because our system isn't generating the kind of results we need to get. What happens with Anthem? In, how is how's that going to work? 2020 is a date on the horizon, right? Yeah, and, it, you know, it, Joe, this announcement really has, you know, no bearing in terms of, you know, the capabilities that we have to, you know, bring to the Anthem business. We've already begun that So you're you know, going to stick with that, process. even, even at, if you have Aetna? Yeah, you know, Joe, one of the things that's interesting about this combination is that, you know, while we're, we're starting here to build out, you know, these capabilities, we want to make this broadly available across the industry with, we have many today partnerships and clients, and I think that's, you know, one of the key elements associated with this that really begins to bend, you know, this healthcare cost curve that we've been talking about. So, you know, I, I, Mark said it yesterday, he said it very well, that, you know, the ability to create something that customers want to come and use. You know, we think that that is the important enabler in terms of being able to make this broadly available for all of our clients and partners. What was CVS's tax rate last year? About 39%. 39? 42. 42? Yep. U.S. companies don't pay the nominal tax rate, they tell me. In your case, you're paying more. No, well, you, know, you guys need some new accountants. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Joe, we, we've been very consistent in terms of, you know, the impact of meaningful, you know, comprehensive tax reform will have a tremendous, you know, impact in terms of our opportunity to invest. Get more money for the insurance companies. Well, no, in, invest back Use into... Use it wisely, yes. Technology. Capital. Yeah. Capital, no, jobs, you know, job growth, infrastructure. Everything. And by the way, it would certainly allow us to accelerate some of the investments that we're talking about here this morning. Hmm. So um, has the 33% rise in the Dow, I mean, it's nice to use stock, part stock to, to make the acquisition. And I mean, it, it, a lot of times you see mergers increase when there's animal spirits and, and uh, stock market activity. Does that help? Does that help get you where you are today, that the business environment is more positive? Yeah, I, I, I think it is. And, and again, you know, I think this combination enables us to do uh, you know, a tremendous amount more. So I'm just trying to figure out, so how much money are we talking about to the bottom line if you're paying, what did you say, 40? What, what, what? We pay one, per, CVS pays about 1% of all corporate taxes in America. <laughs> so how much comes right to the bottom line after, if this goes through at 20? Well, that's the interesting thing that, well, I mean, in the first year, there's a lot of capital generated, but then you have minimum loss ratios, you have all these other sorts of things you need to worry about the regulated entities versus the unregulated entities. So that's something we need to sit down and work through. And the yeah, and the important thing, Joe, being that, you know, we want to use those capabilities to invest back into the business for growth. Great. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for joining us here today. We yeah. really appreciate your time and uh, how in-depth you've been with us. So thank you both for being here today. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Congratulations. Congratulations.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.